In this video, we're going to look at a little bit of what Rails can do. So we're going to view some Rails applications that are out there running in the real world so you can get an idea of the capability of Rails. So let me bring up my web browser here. This first application is an IT support call tracking system that I developed for the IT department for a college that I work for. And this application was completely generated in Ruby on Rails. It talks to a MySQL database. It exists on a Mac OS X server. Both the Rails application and the database exist on the same server in this case because we only have a limited number of users on this machine. I'll go here and log in here. You'll notice this is an unsecured login. Uh, in other words, the password's just hidden from view and we're not using SSL to actually do the transmit the login information and that's probably something that's going to change in the near future but we weren't worried initially about tracking this as there's not really much secure information in here. All of the stuff that you see here is generated by the Ruby on Rails framework. There's there's no other calls or anything. Of course, the graphics were created externally, and they exist as files. And in future videos, we'll talk about how you include graphics and where they get stored and that type of thing. A number of features of this application, you'll see a link here, which goes to a, a just an external movie I created to let the system users know what changes were made. That link was made with uh, Ruby code. A series of buttons to access different aspects of this application. The one we're looking at right now is the issue list. A, you see a drop down here. That's a typical feature with a button. And then down here you'll see a what appears to be a list with some different buttons denoting how you want this list to be sorted. Now in this simple case there's only one issue here. Let me go up and show all the current issues. And you'll notice the speed at which this loaded up. This is an external application running on a, on a server that's remote from me. So I'm doing this across the internet and it's quite fast as you saw that update. So Ruby on Rails is a very fast framework for, for doing things like this. And this was hitting the database and getting back to me. So there's, th this isn't a simple static thing that's being generated. If I want to go down here now and let's, take a look at how this resorts. So there it just resorted all these current issues based on the username and it was quite fast. So Rails gives you a lot of flexibility on how you can build your application and, and make it do what you want. Here's a typical form in Ruby on Rails you fill out and let me show you a little bit of little bit of Ajax while we're at it or Web 2.0. I'm gonna search for this name and watch you'll see a box show up here a drop-down menu actually containing my name. That's what I searched for. If I reduce this search a little bit, you'll see a number of other names show up in here. So that's some little bit of Ajax that we'll get to in future videos on how you actually do that. And that's a simple little call. This due date drop-down user object down here, again, is a single call in a view from uh, Ruby on Rails. So I hope I'm getting you a little excited about how we can do these things and how simple they are to actually do uh, pretty advanced stuff inside of Rails. This is a report that's generated out of our database of how these technicians are doing with different things. And there's some advanced math involved here, which Ruby is capable of because it's a full programming language. This is an external link to a, another application that we have. We can actually manage our technicians from here and that type of thing. We have access to our user database. And this is more typical of a CRUD type application where you have a whole series of simple records that you want to go in and edit and update, delete possibly. And then we have a logout button. It's a pretty typical little application. If we go to the Ruby on Rails website, they actually show some other applications that are out there running in the real world that people are paying money to use in many cases. So Ruby on Rails is not just a simple little web application hobby framework. It, people are making money creating web applications that thousands of people are using. Basecamp is a project management application from 37 signals and you should know that this is where Ruby on Rails came from and in a future video we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about where Ruby on Rails actually came from with regards to Basecamp but Basecamp is a project collaboration 
web application that that's a paid subscription type thing with many different results, all of which are generated out of Ruby on Rails. They have uh, another application they have here is Campfire, which is a web-based chat application with many advanced features. I will have a working file that goes along with this video on the CD or available to VTC uh, University subscribers that will have these various URLs so you can take a look at these for yourself as to what the capabilities of Rails is. Here's some other applications. Here's one that generates podcasts, so it's manipulating RSS feeds, uh, MP3 files, other types of files, audio files, and it's a pretty sophisticated application with many, many subscribers. Shopify is actually an application where you can include a shopping cart in your own application by just adding a few lines of code and into your web application and using their web application create a shopping cart inside of your web application. So it's a pretty slick little setup and that uses Rails. Fluxum is a digital uh, asset management system where you can collect, organize and share your stuff. Again, uses Ruby on Rails to do all this manipulation of different types of things and searches, metadata searches, that type of thing. So what I'm trying to show you here is that Ruby on Rails is a very sophisticated framework that is capable of generating very high-end applications that have many thousands of users using them. It's not a lightweight framework for hobbyists. It's a much more sophisticated thing than that. So in future videos, we'll cover more in depth of what Rails philosophies are, who actually made Rails, where did it come from, and then we'll start getting in depth of how you can actually create your own web applications using Ruby on Rails.